Here's some more 4K video. Let's go ahead and walk a little bit. See how it looks right here. Stabilization overall. So I'm pretty happy with its stabilization here. Even under heavy movement. So this camera will be good for doing some action shots as well. Provided you have a gimbal or something like that to stabilize footage under heavier action. But overall, it's not bad. I think even without a gimbal, look at how good and stable this is right here the Galaxy S24. So let me know your thoughts on it down below. So what is up, guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology. I've had the Galaxy S24 for right around two months or so, and I want to share with you my honest experience with this phone to help you decide if you haven't picked one up yet, if this is going to be your next phone. So let's begin by talking about the price. So the price of this phone is $799 to start, and you can get it in up to 256 gigs, which to me is not that high considering some people want a smaller phone. They might want 512 or 1 terabyte, especially considering that this phone doesn't have an expandable memory. I wish it had at least a 512 gig option. However, for this price point, I do think that you're getting a pretty good deal, especially if you trade in a phone and get this even cheaper. You're getting the Galaxy AI in here. You're getting a triple camera setup, a phone that feels more in line with something like an Apple iPhone 15 Pro instead of the cheaper iPhone 15, and um, a really super smooth 120 hertz OLED display, Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. This seems truly a powerhouse in the pocket, and overall I definitely feel like Samsung is giving you a good phone for that price, so I don't feel like it's a really bad price offering for what you're getting. And most people I do feel like will take advantage of the trade-in and get this even cheaper. So over my two months, I honestly feel like I got my money's worth with the S24. So the next one I want to talk about is two months later with the feel and the body, what I honestly think about it so far. Well, this phone does have itself a Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on the front and on the back. So it feels like it's pretty sturdy in that respect, but an aluminum frame. However, they found a way to kind of make this aluminum feel like the titanium phones that came out this year. So even though it's aluminum, it's got that titanium feel to it. So yeah, just keep that in mind if you like titanium, but you didn't want to pay the full price for those titanium phones. While this is aluminum, they brushed it in a way that really kind of just makes it feel in, light, in line with that. Um, IP68 dust and water resistance means that this phone is actually very capable of getting submerged. I would not do that, but you're probably not going to mess it up if you dropped it in water on accident. For example, armor aluminum 2 frame and really decent scratch resistance. So we're getting to a point now where it's debatable if you even need a screen protector anymore. And this phone feels pretty durable all around the board. I still kept it in a case because Samsung threw one in for free with this purchase, you know, as a pre-order bonus. But if you don't get a pre-order bonus or anything like that, cases shouldn't be too hard to come by. And it's pretty durable, so you probably don't need super, super heavy protection if you like to keep it minimal and thin. I do like that the cameras are very symmetrical there. Um, they're not too thick, so they don't stick off the body too much. And I like the placement of the power button and the volume marker. I think they're in decent locations. They could probably move this down a little bit, but overall, it's not too bad. Left, left side pretty clean. I like the punch hole is pretty small and that the bezels are very thin. So overall, it's just a comfortable size with a screen that doesn't feel too small for day-to-day -day operations while still feeling like a comfortable phone. So it nails pretty much the same ergonomics that the S23 did overall. On day-to-day, -day, it's a really nice phone. If you do have smaller hands, though, this might feel like a little bit of a reach from corner to corner. So you might be doing this stuff, like moving the phone down to reach the corner if you got smaller hands. So it's still not a small phone. And because they went up to 6.2 inches, it feels like a slightly taller than the S23. So the S23 might have been even more perfect in the size, but this is really decent overall. Now, in terms of the display, they definitely have tuned it to be more accurate this year. It's definitely irritated some Samsung customers as, you know, people are used to their oversaturation. This year, they definitely tuned it to be more of a accurate tone. They even had to bring a vividness slider to up the vividness because without that, it was pretty dull for some people. And that was across the S24 line. This was actually done on purpose to make the phone not so oversaturated. 
But it definitely went the opposite direction and people wanted it back. So Samsung brought it back with the Vivid slider. And with that on, you can see that you definitely do get your Vivid saturation back. Overall, very accurate, very easy on the eye display this year with very decent PWM score. So it doesn't really have the flicker problem anymore and it doesn't really hurt the eyes after extended use. It's one of the best things they upgraded about this. I think it makes it more usable for people who are used to LCD displays and OLEDs were hurting your eyes. This one will hurt your eyes much less than prior OLEDs. So very good there. You'll see very deep blacks on here and just overall a super smooth panel as well. It's also pretty tech sharp on, on this panel as well, giving you 416 PPI. However, that's not quite as high as some competitors out there. Still, it seems to be enough. If you really want a 2K panel, you're gonna have to go up to the S24 Plus. Um, it definitely gives you a better display, but it's, it's pretty unnoticeable because when you stretch it across a larger panel, and you go to a smaller panel here, you have to pixel peep to see it. So it doesn't really matter too much. But you have your adaptive refreshes, eye comfort shield. And I like all these different display tones and things that you can do with this display. Because what it does is it allows the user to fine tune the display to really match their preferences. And it gives you a little bit more control than other platforms or other phones. So I really do love the display options here. You even have touch sensitivity if you're using screen protectors in that to keep it super accurate um, on board. I don't have a screen protector on right now, but I have to say this display, even though it's a 6.2, it's not the largest. It is a fantastic panel all across the board. And I don't think you're going to be whatsoever upset with this at all. It's a really solid offering. Also, if you go ahead and turn this panel into landscape, you can actually use this in the landscape mode like this. It's kind of a software feature, but I like that you can use this display in that mode. Also, even though it's a smaller screen, you can still split screen view and things like that, just like you could do on the ultra line. So even though it's going to be a little bit cramped, you could still do this on this 6.2 inch display. That's what I love about these Samsung phones. So let's take it on to software. Well, the big thing here this year is the push of AI. So advanced artificial intelligence. So if you go down here to their advanced feature section, click on advanced intelligence, you're gonna see everything they're offering here, like a real time translation um, for voices and stuff like that. If people are talking in different languages, you can't understand, it can translate those for you. The Samsung keyboard also has chat translation. In addition, I found that the Samsung internet, the ability to summarize an article is pretty awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and find an article. We'll just click the very first one. You click this AI feature right here, hit summarize, and this AI feature is going to summarize the whole article in a short, easy to digest format so you don't have to go ahead and uh, read the entire thing, which can be a drag sometimes. So I really love that feature. Um, using the AI in that sense. You have the photo editor and many more. Like this wallpaper here, if you're wondering where I got it from, this is an AI generated wallpaper. You can see that it's AI by that little icon right there. Now to get to your AI generation wallpapers, you'll go here into wallpaper and style. You'll go to change wallpapers, scroll down till you see creative and under creative, you're gonna find yourself generative AI stuff. That's how I generated that one. And this is so awesome. I really love this because you can really kind of tweak it to the way you want and get yourself a really nice wallpaper. Um, and you don't have to be subjected to Samsung's like nine that they throw in there for the whole year and that's it. So really like that. Other than that, it's still your Galaxy experience. Fun to use, tons of features, Samsung decks, interpreters, um, so many things in here, Galaxy Store, customization, edge panels, it's all here. Let's go over here to theming, you can theme out the phone, you compare it with the watch. Um, it just, the list goes on and on and on, tons of widget support, tons of third-party app support. It really is a super customizable phone, or you can just kind of leave it in the One UI version, just keep it kind of clean and simple like that, or you can really tweak the icons, change it. You can grab Good Lock from the store and go ahead and go even deeper into customization. So it's just really a fun little phone to use day to day. It really is. Um, no S Pen or nothing like that, but you don't really need one on a screen this size. This phone is a super fun phone to use um, with lots of advanced technology. Well, at the same time, if you don't want it to be overly, 
you know, too complex, you can keep it simple and use it in a simple format. So it's very versatile. Love it. Two months later with performance, this thing is a rocket. It's a rocket in your pocket. This thing flies through pretty much everything. It's super well optimized. Samsung is definitely stepping it up here. Their animations are still not the smoothest on the board to me in terms of across the board. I still feel like some Pixel phones, nothing phones are a little bit better with the animations, but they're definitely stepping it up and they don't look nearly like they used to look. So very snappy day to day. And with good luck, you can go ahead and remove the double swipe gesture and stuff like that. So this is probably at this size, it's going to be hard to beat this in speed. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is really optimized for things like gaming. Um, so there might be some MediaTek CPUs that can out, outdo it in day-to-day -day CPU stuff as those are boosted in that area. But the GPU, the battery life with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is just really a solid chip. Um, and you can definitely do some really decent video editing and stuff like that if you really need to. Plug this thing into a DeX monitor with the USB-C out and you will have yourself a little, just get yourself a mouse. You can probably edit straight off of your phone. So a really, really cool um, little performing phone here. Definitely a lot of power in your pocket here with this phone. Um, it is lacking a little bit of RAM. So this does have eight gigs. You had to go to the S24 plus if you want 12 GB RAM. So keep that in mind. But I honestly think with a phone this size, how much are you really going to be multitasking and splitting screens that often? I feel like it's more of a feature that's there if you need it. But with this smaller screen, it kind of becomes a little bit, a little bit crammed to me. So I feel like it's more of an add on feature here. And then you know, with a bigger phone, you would actually take more advantage of that. So performance overall, super fast. Two months later, honestly, I'm enjoying the heck out of the performance on this. It feels amazing. All right, so the camera. I have to tell you, I absolutely love the Galaxy S24's camera setup. Let me show you why. In more, you have Expert Raw Pro Pro Video. You have all these like neat pro-like features and fun features. This really reminds me of back in the day when you had point-and-shoot cameras with all these nice modes on it. Um, it's really cool. You have food modes where you can punch up the saturation on food. That's not a food, but it will still kind of showcase what I'm talking about. You see how green that Android robot became. Also, if I go over here to more, you'll see a night mode. And the night photography, the nightography is really solid on this one. It really punches up the uh, color at night, makes it very vivid to see, even though it's uh, going to be in dim, dim lit situations. You have pro videos where you can go ahead and even tweak things like audio. Um, over there, you can change it between the front and the rear. And then on the pro video, let's go back over there to pro video. You, it actually remembers where you saved it. So let's say you prop this thing up on a tripod and you had it at one over 60 in the shutter. You had the exposure value to plus 0.5. It will remember where it was and it'll just leave it there. So if that's the environment you're in and you're shooting it, you could just go back to pro video and remember where you're at. It also monitors your audio up there on the left. And then if you go over here, you have your regular mode, you punch it out, you go over here. This phone is just so versatile in everything, basically. And then you go over here, 8K at 60, 4K or 8K at 30, sorry, 8K at 30, UHD at 60. They used to have 8K at 24, so that's an upgrade as well. And you'll see 16 by nine, super steady mode for very fast motion. This is a versatile beast in your pocket. And then you have even more stuff here advanced video options. You could change between H.264 or HEVC, HDR10 videos, the shooting modes, the grid lines. Truly, um, the native camera here on the Samsung is really, really strong. Lots of versatility, pretty long zoom, even though this is the base model. Let's go over here. You can see we'll go 30 times zoom on this base model Samsung. So such a versatile setup. Take a look at some of the samples I took and let me know your thoughts on them so far.
Okay, so the battery life is pretty darn good on this one as well. It has battery protection as well if you want to go ahead and do that. Um, they have the ability to change the charging settings as well. So if you don't want to fast charge the battery, that's cool. Um, you can clearly turn off the battery percentage. They even give you like a little learn more section, which will tell you how to maintain your Samsung Galaxy battery. Uh, pretty cool. Also, the power saving modes are very customizable as well to really like dial in the battery life settings. So again, Samsung with their versatility, once again, in the battery section. Also, the battery on here actually with a 4000 for a phone this size easily makes it a day. Because see, here's the thing. When you're using a phone at 6.2 inches, you don't use it as much as a larger phone that's kind of sucking you in all day. So this phone actually, to me, kind of feels like I get almost the same usage throughout the day as like an S24 Ultra because I'm just using it a little bit less. And even when I'm not, it still lasts all day, even though it's gonna be finishing with less battery life. If I start playing around with those power modes, it's fine. And because the battery is smaller, it actually charges faster than like a S24 Ultra. So this one right here is very acceptable in battery and definitely one I could recommend, even for the long term, a 4000 is a pretty sizable battery for a phone of this size. It feels like a pretty good value for the price you're paying. The next one that's actually pretty good is the audio. With the Dolby Atmos pretty much on all Samsung phones, especially the S lines, you'll get really solid audio depending on whatever you're doing on your phone. But it's pretty loud. This actually is matching up close to like an iPhone 15 Pro Max and the audio quality, at least the loudness. I can't say exactly the audio quality, but the, the loudness of it, it's it's a darn loud phone for this price point. Um, it's, it's only like a decibel or two less than the S24 Ultra. So it's pretty darn loud on the S24. It's speaker phone calls are going to be good. Um, you know, just listen to music and things like that also going to be very good. It's a really good experience in the audio department. I kind of like the way they made the speaker look this year. It looks quite nice, actually very, very thin and just very nice looking. And of course you'll have one buried up in there. You can't really even see it. Um, but it's pretty, it's pretty so in terms of the phone call and reception, you know, these are really strong for Samsung phones, really big battery strength. Um, or not battery strength, the signal strength, sorry. Signal strength has been really strong. I'm usually always like four or five bars, never in a three bar area. Now this could, this could depend on where you're at. If you get out somewhere, you know, really low underground or you get out somewhere way out in the country or something, you might be pretty low in battery life. But overall, this, this phone right here has incredibly good signal strength, phone call quality and reception. 5G is pretty fast fast Wi-Fi performance, Bluetooth speeds are blazing quick. The USB transfer speeds are also blazing quick. I'm actually gonna transfer a bunch of photos out um, from this today for this video. So I'm gonna be doing that pretty quickly. Samsung makes SDs and you know they make SD card and SSDs and stuff like that. So they know this area pretty well. This phone is, um, yeah, it's a uh, pretty darn good in that respect. So the reception, connectivity, all that, it's a, it's definitely a thumbs up. Two months later, I've been enjoying. And it. one of the cons, though, I feel like, and it's not, this is going to be subjective, of course. You know, most video reviews are subjective based on that person's experience, but for me, it's going to be the colors. I feel like the colors are a little bit drab this year. They're a little bit meh. They're not like that vibrant looking. They're kind of classy though, like they're toned down, you know, respectable, but. A lot of people throw a case on of the color of their choice and probably don't care. But for me, I do think that the colors, I mean, of course, I shouldn't be saying that when I went with basically the most bland color of all of them. But even when you look at the colors here, I've seen a couple of them already. Nah, they're not that exciting to me. They look a little bit boring this year. They're not that vibrant or nothing like that. So not a major fan of the color options this year. I hope Samsung goes a little bit more vibrant with their future color options. And is there any cons? Because Nick, bro, you've been you've been praising this thing like all video. Like, is there anything bad about it? And the truth is, is it's kind of very mature. There's not a ton that's really bad about this phone. Um, but if there was some things I would say I don't like, I don't like that how it's kind of like the same thing basically as last year. I feel like your, your Samsung is kind of getting comfortable with the same kind of phone. It doesn't feel really out there. The cameras look the same as like the past couple of years. So it doesn't feel very different, but it just feels very polished and refined. Um, also, I feel like the punch hole camera could go away eventually. Let's go under display camera, get us a full screen um, right there. 
the colors, you know, it takes them getting used to. They're not as saturated as they used to be. Even with the Vivid Mode, they're just, they don't have that same deep saturation they used to have. They have a very accurate and now vivid mode to make it more vivid, but they're still very accurate. So if you're into a more super deep saturation, like over punching saturation, you'll probably want an older Samsung phone. Um, there's not much else. I, I wish it still had SD card slot, but doesn't. That's pretty lame because their tablets still have those. Um, at the end of the day, though, there's not much else to say. Two months later, my honest experience is it's been pretty darn great. And um, I enjoy using this phone still to this day. So let me know your thoughts on the Galaxy S24. Are you planning on getting one? Are you cool with the S23? And by the way, if you liked basically almost everything I said here and you just want to save some money, go with the S23. It gives you like most of what this is offering. And when it gets the AI features, then it's pretty much a wash. It's down to the price point that you want to pay. Comment down below. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. And peace. Thank you.